Yes, thank you very much, uh, Professor Denil, also for invitation to such a beautiful country like Brazil and also to your uh, Federal University of Sao Carlos. And let me present me your, my um, presentation about significance of certified reference materials in speciation analysis. Well, speciation analysis is a growing field of interest in analytical chemistry and not only in my opinion, uh, significance of certified reference materials is uh, also uh, paying attention by audience, scientific audience, and that's why we should start with definitions, what do we think are these certified reference materials. Uh, well, first, as we see, reference material, abbreviated RN, can be material which is sufficiently homogeneous with, uh, and stable, of course, with respect to one or more specified properties, which was established for specific measurement uh, process. But we also should distinguish between these two because we have a second category, certified reference materials, SRM, because uh, this reference material is uh, accompanied by a certificate which uh, provides the value of its specified uh, pro property, also uh, associated uncertainty, and the state statement of metrological traceability. What, how we can uh, divide our reference materials? First, uh, can be uh, listed materials without matrix, which include pure substances as well as standard solutions. And uh, the second uh, group can be defined as uh, reference materials containing matrix. And these uh, are like this, quality control materials, laboratory reference materials, and certified reference materials. Mainly difference between them is uh, presence of mat oh, sorry, presence of matrix or its lack of the matrix. First, the category of materials can be used for calibration purposes mainly. Uh, and the second uh, category of materials are mainly used uh, in validation processes. Of course, they can also be used for uh, calibration. But um, another aspect of, about which we should know is the price of these materials. And as a rule, these uh, materials containing matrix are more expensive. Moreover, our goal should be that uh, if we work uh, permanently with one type of samples, for example, with environmental samples, these materials with metrics should be very helpful. I would say more, they should be necessary to uh, assure the validation of the analytical procedure. And another point which we should remember is that uh, when we uh, have to choose which uh, material metrics containing is the best, we should, uh, lead, we should uh, think about the closest possibility between the real samples and this material. In other words, uh, the matrix should be as close as possible to the uh, all organic, inorganic compounds present in the real samples under analysis. Well, we can uh, go on with this division of reference materials into two categories, primary reference substances as well as secondary reference materials. First group, primary, uh, includes substances of which uh, quality properties were sufficiently known 
and the values of these properties are determined and accepted without the need of reference or comparison with other substances. However, the secondary reference materials are substances which were characterized by comparison of their properties with a primary reference substance. Well, if uh, we look through this website about speciation, which is a European uh, uh, W site uh, dealing with speciation problems, they uh, provide such a um, statement that the, the term reference material is a generic term, which uh, means that it comprises materials that are investigated and documented at different levels. And also they uh, define this certified reference materials as a material which is characterized by a metrological valid procedure for one or more specific properties and of course accompanied by a certificate which uh, provides the validity and also it makes possible its metrological traceability. There are also other categories like non-certified reference materials. However, they have no uh, certificate. They are also sometimes called uh, reference materials. But uh, we should be aware of their limited um, uh, extent in comparison with the certified reference materials. But also such a situation can be that uh, we do not have um, certified reference materials which will meet our expectations. In that case, uh, we can also use non-certified reference materials. Or in other words, we can also have a situation that for our needs, uh, we will not have this certified reference materials. In that case, there is no choice. We have to use non-certified. However, always, if I had a choice, it's better to use certified reference material. Well, we can say some words about uh, production of CRMS. They can be um, determined by three ways. First way is uh, on the grounds of earlier validated reference metals existing, known for years. And of course, they must be um, based on several independent measurement methods. And surely, they must be based on measurements performed by a net of laboratories specialized in manufacturing and control of uh, tested materials, also involved in inter-laboratory studies. <clears throat> Let's look at the manufacture of these reference materials. In Europe, we have such an institute for reference materials and measurements, in the abbreviation IRMN, or in the French language, Bureau Communitaire de Référence, and in America, exactly in the USA, there is a National Institute of Standard and Technology which produces the standard reference materials, abbreviated SRM, and also NIST. In Poland, we have um, one institute in Warsaw which is specialized in the production and the validation of natural, oh, sorry, of certified reference material. And the example of this material, certified reference material which was produced in my country is mixed Polish herbs. I must say it's my favorite because I work with research of medicinal plants. That's why it needs my uh, help, it needs, uh, meets my requirements and expectation as for the concentration uh, of many uh, trace elements as well as macro elements. Mm. Well, there is a problem that of uh, validity, of importance of certified reference materials for speciation studies, which was highlighted in the uh, 80s, in 88 and later, by the European Commission. They, that's why they um, launched a series of projects leading to uh, improvement of uh, quality of speciation measurements for chemical forms of such elements, uh, especially uh, these heavy metals, here you have an examples of aluminium, arsenic, mercury, lead, and selenium. And of course, they were um, 
uh, leading to uh, establish such uh, reference materials in various biological and environmental matrices, as well along with the extractable forms of these metals and non-metal, and soils and sediments. So, uh, as a result of these uh, uh, trials, we now have uh, several commercially available reference materials, and as they claim on their um, site, they can at least serve as a good starting point for uh, quality control and development of speciation analysis. And here I want to present uh, a table which uh, shows the examples of uh, um, possible reference materials, mainly for metallic elements mentioned before, and of course in different, um, containing different matrices. As uh, for example, if you look at aqueous solution, we have uh, available reference materials for arsenic, also for chromium, the same, only two, well, are available for sediment, for mercury and uh, stannium, and also in soil, chromium is available as a reference material. And as you can see, uh, many, mat many uh, reference materials were established for seafood, as well as, uh, as you can see, in mussel and oyster, uh, as well as in fish. And, uh, for mussel and oyster, we have all of them available. In urine, I have found only one for arsenic and in hair and whole blood for mercury. Uh, 